Live from the Slightly Twisted Deck Bar, it's the Poojee Podcast with Justin Lameen. The Poojee Podcast is proudly sponsored by Cimarron Golf Club, located in Jacksonville, Florida, off County Road 210, just west of St. John's Parkway. Thank you for tuning into this episode of the Poojee Podcast, episode 57, and the Jaguars lost their eighth straight game. Cheers to that. Because it is mock draft season, according to one of our panelists. We're looking forward to it. We're excited for the (laughs) offseason. There it is. We got mock draft season coming up. Sam Sam, uh, Sam Leggett's going to jump in and and give us some of his mock draft season updates. But we are going to go through some other NFL stuff. And mind you, I'm back from vacation. Thank you to Jacob and the rest of these guys for taking over last week. Luke, I know you were on vacation as well fun time up in savannah i didn't give a hot take last week and i feel obligated to give one now and my hot take for week 10 is a post week 10 hot take and it's going to be that the jaguars versus the packers game was the most exciting game on sunday in the nfl that's my week 10 hot take for a game that many believed was going to be an absolute shit show the jaguars kept that thing close until the end lost the game 24 20 solidifying our draft position with the number two pick in the draft. The Jacksonville Jaguars will be selecting who let's flip over to Sam Leggett. Tell us a little bit about mock draft season, Sam. Mock draft season. Listen, Jags just got a one, got a lead ahead of the next crappiest team so that we can afford to lose another game and still have the second overall pick in the draft. I think that's great news. I think a lot of Jags fans are really excited about this moment in our quest for Trevor Lawrence or Justin Fields. Back to you, Justin. And, and hey, you talk about Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields, the number two pick. Sounds like we're going to get one of those two guys if, of course, the front office doesn't fudge it up. Jacob, let's bring you in here. You were just talking about a prospect uh, about five minutes ago. What type of prospect would fudge it up for the Jaguars front office? Are you are you asking me to to mention the one I mentioned? Hey, if you want to put it out there, serve it up on a silver platter for everyone. Well, well, of course, um, with what Sam's talking about of us trying to get you know top pick and some other teams potentially fudging it up, um, people have looked an other way in case we don't have a shot at Fields or Lawrence, and they mentioned Kyle Kyle Trask from Florida. And Boo. I know we got a lot of, no more Florida picks. Boo. Boo! I know we have a lot of Gator fans in Jacksonville. And I didn't really watch much Gator films, so I'm like, let me let me watch his midseason highlights, see it. And honestly, not to not to annoy or uh, piss off any Gator fans, but I think he's just going to be bad at the next level. And I think he's the product of some really good players on his team, especially Kyle Pitts. Um, I think he's a serviceable quarterback in college, but I don't think he's going to be a franchise guy. Well, I'm glad you brought up Kyle Pitts there because since day one of this season I've been wanting him in Jacksonville in fact I thought the Jaguars should have kidnapped him when he was playing at TIA Bank Stadium when uh, they played Georgia here a few weeks ago I thought they should have just locked him in the locker room and kept him here and just said we're going to spend our second draft pick our second first round draft pick on Kyle Pitts I think he's a very good draft or a very good uh, tight end would be a great draft pick for us a tight end we haven't had in a very long time someone like him So uh, that's enough draft talk for right now. That will get increasingly more as the season unfolds. Sam, thanks for bringing that energy. I can't wait for draft season because that's where we actually tend to win some off seasons uh, with free agency and the draft. But let's go into our recap from the Packers game. Luke, I know, you know, you're a big Jag fan, 24-20 versus the Packers. Did you expect that close of a game going into this one? Absolutely not. Uh, I watched the first quarter on TV, listened to the rest of it on the radio while driving back to Orlando. Um, And I think it was probably the best outcome you could ask as a Jaguars fan besides a win. You got to see a competitive game to the very end. Uh, We had a chance to win it at the end, and we ended up losing and helping our draft stock stay low or high, whichever way you look at it. Um, So about the best you can ask on a Sunday for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I like it. No, I fully agree. Just a competitive game, fun to watch as a fan. 
and we maintain that number two pick in the draft like that whiteboard says behind you. Who will they be picking? Who knows? We'll find out soon enough. Jacob, let's bring you in here. Anything to take away from that Jags game, long-term pieces that we like, uh, anything that we see needs to be changed anytime soon? I actually really appreciate that question because thinking about the game back when I was watching it and today before um, the podcast, I was really surprised and, you know, with a draft pick, we're worried about a little worried about how our defense played. You know, our defense played one of the best um, offenses and, you know, there's some pieces that for, for the future could be really good. Like Sidney Jones, um, CJ Henderson was the big pickup this year in the draft. Um, who was going to play opposite him, Trey Herndon. But Sidney Jones actually might have a revitalized career here in Jacksonville. He's been playing well. Um, I think I wrote it down somewhere. He had like nine tackles. Um, he had the interception. He led the team in pass defense, um, the fastest defended. So he looks like a really good piece. And then Devon Hamilton, the rookie um, defensive tackle, looked really solid. He strung together multiple really good games. Um, But like Luke said, it was unfortunately not enough to win. But fortunately, that helps to stay in the hunt for a top pick. Yeah, I mean, let's be real. If it wasn't for beating the Colts in week one, which I fully believe was a product of Phillip Rivers not knowing the offense yet due to a weird offseason, these these losses wouldn't be as – the early season losses wouldn't have been as hard to take and – the development would have been what everyone had been focusing on since day one. So I'm glad you brought up Devon Hamilton. I'm glad you brought up Sidney Jones because let's be real, this season from the get-go was all about development and what type of guys are going to be on the team in the long term. And like I said in the last podcast or two podcasts ago, a lot of guys on this team are just fighting for roster spots on other teams, and that's who we have starting for us. Sam, I'm going to go to you, but not in a Jaguars capacity because I want to bring Maynard in here in a second. Your sleeper fa- or your your bust fantasy pick last week was Lamar Jackson, quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens, and you pretty much hit that thing right on the money in a game that a lot of people thought Lamar Jackson would flourish. You turn on the TV, it looked like white fuzz floating around in the air because it was so much rain, and he couldn't seem to get it under control. Uh, Matt, I, I want to bring you in. Sam, I want to bring you in. Uh, where did you where did you pick that sleeper pick from? Listen, it comes down to simple math for me. I needed 25 fantasy points to win this week. So Lamar Jackson puts up 22 points. That's, that's, so it's that simple. You know, he had a week. I needed him to do well, and he's trash. No, but for real, I mean, we all know Bill Belichick is, you know, a coaching genius. He's, he's been at it for a while. The man can scheme players out of the game completely. So how about you take the only player that can do anything you know, on that offense right now, it's a pretty, you know, pretty, I'd say, mediocre offense in the Ravens this season. And how about you take away their game-breaking player? And um, that's what he did, and, and sure enough, you know, they come out with a W. And, Matt, let's, uh, let's flip it over to you. I know you're a Ravens fan, resident Ravens expert, and I don't want to keep talking about the Ravens losing. It's not my fault they're losing. But uh, what, what happened in that, that game against the Patriots? That should have been a win. They should be sitting at – what seven uh six and two now they're sitting at five six and three they should be seven and two um you know what's going on are they going to be okay come playoff time or is this another talented team that's going to uh find a way to uh, mess it up at the end well what i don't understand is why in the pouring down rain we have more passing plays than run against when we're a run heavy offense so that was very questionable to me um i said we're a run heavy offense so why are we running the ball even more um so, with Lamar Jackson throwing deep in the first half, I didn't understand that. It also doesn't help when our center uh, mishandles the snap three times. So, that never helps in that situation. Um, I mean, we had a wildcat situation in the third quarter. Didn't understand that. We had to fumble on the ball because of a bad snap. Not going for a fourth down. Um, and just quite frankly, you know, we got beat. We got beat plain and simple. Um, Patriots ran the ball well. Um, and they made plays when they needed to. Um, and then we just got a banged up defensive line, losing both of our nose tackles, so it doesn't help. Um, so hopefully this doesn't do damage for the rest of the season. Um, this is now the time of the year where you know, playoff implications are going to start getting bigger and bigger as the season goes on. And right now we're on the verge of getting out of the playoff race as of right now. 
Yeah, and they have a, a huge game coming up, which I'm sure we'll talk about in a little bit against Tennessee at home, a chance to bounce back. Steven, I want to bring you in here real quick. Uh, I know you're a Steelers fan. I know Steelers are playing here in Jacksonville this week. Uh, what are your preliminary thoughts on that matchup? What, uh, what, what do you favor? Is it, is it going to be a blowout? Is it going to be something close to watch? What do you think? Well, hopefully we just get out of Jacksonville with the win. You know, we really struggle against Jacksonville for some God knows reason. I really don't understand it, quite frankly. Uh, so hopefully, you know, we just don't pull a big meme and allow Jacksonville to, you know, uh, beat us and we lose our unbeaten streak. That would be really sad. So I think, you know, the Steelers just need to keep playing their style of football at the defense, you know, play around the defense. You know, we have one of the best defenses in the league, so let them do their thing. Um, you know, Jacksonville's offense outside of James Robinson and DJ Chark, I think is very suspect. So, you know, just pin your ears back and go after Jake Luton. And then if you're Ben, I think, you know, just let the run game set up the passing game, you know. I think Jacksonville, you know, is very like you guys mentioned, is very young, um, and defense as well. So just take advantage of that. And I'm I'm glad you brought up the Pittsburgh run game because James Conner, a uh, fantasy running back of mine, has been missing in action over the last two weeks. No idea what has happened to that guy. Maybe he can get back on track this week. But speaking about fantasy, was lucky to have both my fantasy teams win this week. They've been on some sort of a pattern the last seven weeks. When both of them win, they both win. When one wins, they both win. When one loses, they both lose, blah, 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 so on and so forth. So it was a good fantasy weekend for me. Both teams won. Can we get some fantasy predictions in here? Jacob, I want to go to you, a player, player that you think might boom this week in fantasy football. Well, I have, I have two I want to mention, and one of them uh, is, is in the Steelers game. And I say Steelers game only because it's actually the defense of the Steelers. I think that's the biggest boom of the week. It's probably not going to be the largest point scored by a player, but you have like one of the best defenses, if not the best defense against our Jake Luton led pass offense. That's got to equal a W for you. Uh, but Kyler Murray against the Seahawks, I'm really excited about. He's been balling. Um, I'll get more into that later because that's going to be my intrigue matchup as well. But Kyler Murray, start that man. I like it. And uh, any any busts or sleepers you got for me? Um, yeah, I actually have a couple of big running backs that I think are going to bust. One of them, Derrick Henry. Um, he's playing against a really good Baltimore Ravens run defense. He's not really been playing too solid as of late. Um, I think he's going to bust as well as Aaron Jones, who's playing the Indianapolis Colts. He didn't really even do much against us last week, but they have a lot of weapons. Um, and then I have a sleeper that I'm going to – bring back from last week only because he didn't play against us and Alan Lazard he's actually officially off the IR and been activated and I think he's going to play and I have a hot take that I think he's actually going to score 20 fantasy points this week because they're going to be all over Devontae Adams and Lazard's a baller I think he's going to just do well yeah that's good stuff I mean Alan Lazard an undrafted free agent here in Jacksonville another talented guy Jacksonville has let walk and he's gone and, and made a career elsewhere uh, similar to Allen Robinson, who was on Monday night football with the Chicago bears. And do I feel bad for Allen Robinson, the quarterbacks he's had to play with during his career, he could have been a something special in this league. If he had better quarterback play, let's go over to Sam real quick, Sam, any, uh, any fantasy insight from you? I mean, you hit that sleeper on the head last week with, or the bust on the head last week with Lamar Jackson. Give me your boom bust and sleeper. Well, I don't really have a boom for this week. I'm um, hoping that obviously all my guys do well, but I do have a surprise, a, a, a bust candidate that I think a lot of Jags fans would be interested. And I'm going to have to say it's James Robinson this week against the Steelers. Now, you might say, hold up, Sam, you're just pulling the Steelers' good run defense and, you know, sticking a player and saying they're going to have a bad game. But I really think this is a bad matchup for him. And let me tell you why. One, obviously, Steelers' run defense is really good. Two, I don't know if you guys watched the game and, you know, watched James Robinson closely, but I think they're giving him a little too many reps for a rookie player. I think he's starting to slow down a little bit. I don't know, you guys, he just doesn't have the same, I don't know, you know, burst as he had. You can tell he's tiring down. Maybe he's got, you know, a couple injuries piling up. 
personally. I think they're going to try to lean on them a lot against the Steelers. I mean, they're pass rushed. There's no way we're going to be able to throw on this team. So let's try to run it off. I just think that, you know, it's a bad matchup. A lot of work, heavy volume for James Robinson. I think this is the first week where he has a little down week in, you know, his first season. It's just, just a terrible matchup for him. I feel bad for the kid because, you know, he's basically their entire offense. But at some point, you know, you know, he can't be, he can't be, you know, carrying the entire team for 16 games straight. So I'm trying to say. Yeah, and that, that makes complete sense. The sad thing is, is if he does have a pretty bad game, people are going to start writing him off. But every running back, I mean, we saw Monday night, Dalvin Cook didn't have his best night, and he's still considered one of the top three running backs in the league. James Robinson, by no means top three running back, but obviously a top 10 running back by many standards. Currently, if he has one bad game, you know, you, you got to cut him some slack. He does look like the future running back here in Jacksonville. And it's understandable. You're on a one and eight team. What difference does it make if you run for 150 yards or 100 or maybe 75? Your, your team's not winning games regardless. They're, they're not winning games because of you or they're not winning games in spite of you. They're just not winning games and you're the entire offense. Did you have a sleeper or anything, or are you just going with James Robinson as your bust? Yeah, I got a good sleeper, and it's actually a waiver wire ad for everyone this week. I like a Michael Pittman Jr. from the Colts. The man, if you watched Thursday Night Football last week, you, this guy is going to be their number one over the middle, yards after the catch. Basically, I like this column, you know, an A.J. Brown type. For the Colts, he's got he coming out of college. You know he was great, contested catch as well. But you really see him, you know, you see that four four speed, and he's really coming alive second half after the injury in the first half. Go pick him up this week. Yeah, Michael Pittman. He's benefiting from T Y Hilton coming back. He's kind of getting a little uh, less coverage on him. Over a hundred yards Thursday night against the Titans team. Uh, whose defense has actually played a little bit better this year than many people believed. Luke, let's go to you. Uh, from a fantasy standpoint, I know your teams aren't doing too hot this season, but that doesn't mean you might not know who the best players are. Do you have a uh, boom, bust, or sleeper for me? I'm coming back into playoff contention in one. Three-game win streak right now. Uh, for my boom, bust, I'm going to stick with receivers for both. Uh, for my boom, I'm going to stick with two rookie receivers. I'm going to go with T. Higgins and Jefferson from the uh, Minnesota Vikings. I think both of them are going to have some great games. I mean, T. Higgins going against the Washington football team. I mean, you should be able to find some yards and some touchdowns there. And Jefferson going against the Cowboys. Obviously, Jefferson and Kirk Cousins have a rapport just building. I mean, go against that Cowboys defense and just light them up. On the bus side, Buccaneers receivers. All botch receivers are going to get the, the Rams effect and the Ramsey effect, and they're going to be shut down. Uh, you know you've seen when the Bucks play a good secondary, like the Saints, they are not there. Tom Brady can't do anything. So I don't know if the Bucks receivers are going to show up on Monday night. I'm very glad you mentioned that. Um, obviously, we haven't talked before we recorded this. My, one of my booms for the week was Justin Jefferson. Really, it was just – Vikings receivers him or Adam Thielen and one of my busts was Buccaneers offense um, they struggled against New Orleans last a few weeks ago on Sunday night football here they are on prime time again against a very good Rams defense fourth against the pass first against the run I don't think Ronald Jones does anything I don't think Fournette does anything I mean, I'm scared for Tom Brady this week um, in his fantasy numbers. We did see Tom Brady bounce back against the Panthers. I don't know if that's going to carry over into this matchup, but that's funny. And then on Jacob's uh, bust note, I had Aaron Jones as my other bust. So there go my picks right there. The only thing I have left are my sleepers, and I have Josh Jacobs and DeAndre Swift as sleepers. I think these are two guys in this league – that are not getting the credit they deserve, especially Josh Jacobs. I don't know if it's because he plays closer to the West Coast, the later games, isn't always on TV, but he had over he had 30 points last week against a Denver team that's played pretty well defensively, and he just tore them up. As for DeAndre Swift, 26 points versus Washington last week. He has a really good matchup against Carolina, the fourth most points allowed to fantasy running backs this season. Um, so he's uh, he's going to have a great matchup against Carolina. They just allowed 30 points to the Buccaneer running backs this past week. Those are my 
two sleepers. Steven, let's go over to you. Do you have any uh, fantasy input for us? Yeah. Um, sticking with the theme of rookie receivers, um, you know, Justin Jefferson has played very well this year. I'm going to go chase Claypool against Jacksonville. I think he has a real chance to continue playing well like he has. He's got seven touchdowns this year. He had two more this week, this past week against the Bengals. Um, I think he has a definitely a very favorable matchup against Jacksonville on Sunday. So I look for him. And then um, in New Orleans, I, you know, Alvin Kamara just came off a big game against the San Francisco 49ers. He got 27 points um, for my fantasy team. I think he will have a great chance to do well and the Saints as a whole on offense and their skill positions against a very suspect away in the defense. But on the flip side, look for uh, Atlanta potentially to have some guys go off as well. I think that might be a shootout. So we're looking at a shootout in the Atlanta versus New Orleans game. Um, interesting. Oh, and then – Bust, bust. Um, never again will I ever pick up Drew Lock. You know, I had Matt Ryan on the bye last week. Uh, uh, Drew Lock got me a whopping six. Uh, I think he's also hurt currently. So, yeah, he's on a bus. He's up going forward. So, I like it. So, no more Drew Lock. Saints offense is going to dominate. It's going to be a shootout with the Falcons versus the Saints and Chase Claypool is going to have himself a day versus Jacksonville. And I'm glad you brought up Drew Locke. He's a waiver wire quarterback. While we're on that topic, I want to give some love to Alex Smith. Alex Smith had a hell of a game against Detroit, a game that he very well played enough, played well enough to win, almost 300 passing yards, absolutely his comeback game of this season. So big shout-out to Alex Smith. Fantastic comeback for you, man. Uh, Matt Maynard, let's go over to you, last but not least, to give us some fantasy input. Yeah, so my boomers, I'm going with two guys, and that's both Cleveland running backs, Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb. Uh, They showed this past week against the Texans on why they're going to be probably another run-heavy offense throughout the season. Uh, Nick Chubb tore it up on his first game back. We had two touchdowns and over 112 yards. Um, Could have had another one near the end of the game, uh, but he decided to run at the one-yard line at the end and probably screwed a lot of people that took the three-and-a-half spread right there. That one hurts, Matt. That hurts. That hurts personally. I don't know. Did you know that I did that? Because that hurts. Uh, I think I did. So I say that's 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 a tough one to swallow right there. But no, I think they're both going to go off uh, this week against a team that's has just been tanking right now, and that's going to lead to my bust, and that's going to be Carson Wentz uh, with the Eagles. Carson just looked awful against the Giants this past week, and I think it's just going to keep going. Uh, There's a very well chance that they could end up being one of the worst teams now in that NFC least division. So I would not go with Carson Wentz at all from here on out. And then my sleeper, I'm going with a guy that just picked up in a trade today, and that's going to be Zeke Elliott. Uh, He's slowly getting back to what he was coming off going into the bye week. And I think this is going to be my hot take. I'm going for two toters and over 100 yards plus against the Minnesota Vikings this week. So a locker room change for Zeke Elliott joining your team in fantasy. That's going to be what does it for him this week in fantasy. I like it. I do have a question. I wasn't planning on this, but you brought up a good point about Carson Wentz. Um, We'll go through all of you guys. No explanation needed. You have Alex Smith, Carson Wentz, Daniel Jones, and Garrett Gilbert. Can you rank those four guys in order as from top to bottom? Sam, we'll start with you. Daniel Jones, Alex Smith, Carson Wentz, and Garrett Gilbert. What an awful division for quarterbacks. I don't know. I got to go with Carson Wentz still at the top, and then Daniel Jones in a close second. I mean, like, let's be real. Daniel Jones has got some rushing ability to him, and, you know, he sucks. You know, he turns it over a whole lot. But, I mean, at some point, you know, Carson Wentz, I mean, they're going to have to start looking at other quarterbacks. It's like this guy – He's giving all the pieces, his entire offense is back. I mean, what's holding him back? Is his offensive line? I mean, Lane Johnson was playing last week, so I don't understand. Um, it's really not cool for for me and Dallas Goddard and all these players that need to be doing well. It's just it's just disappointing. So yeah. Getting a little selfish there, talking about not good for me with my fantasy team. No, the more I think about this question, the more I laugh at it because Carson Wentz drafted as a, you know, a a top two quarterback in his draft. You know, people are questioning if he's even a a career 
you know, franchise quarterback, Daniel Jones might be the most successful looking quarterback out of that group. Jacob, what about you? Daniel Jones, Alex Smith, Carson Wentz, Garrett Gilbert, rank them one to four. I feel like my teacher just came back after a substitute was in and just offered a pop quiz and like, crap, like this is such an awful thing to have to rank. Um, but Gilbert's definitely at the bottom. Um, I would say, I, I don't I would, know. Gilbert, Gilbert put up a fight against the Steelers in his one game with the Cowboys. He looked, he looked okay. I mean, I kind of want to, I kind of want to put Alex Smith and, and, and Carson Wentz kind of close to each other. Carson should be a lot better. He's just not playing it. And I'll say Daniel Jones just because I think he's got the most potential moving forward. He's still a young guy. He's still pretty fresh into his career. But it's just an awful division. Yeah, bad bad group of quarterbacks there. Uh, Matt, thanks for for bringing that up. Let's let's go into intrigue matchups coming off an unintriguing conversation about NFC least quarterbacks. Uh, Matt, we'll, we'll go back to you. Who do you have this week as your intrigue matchup? I have an idea of who it might be, but but who do you got? Yeah, give me Tennessee and Baltimore. Uh, this is a bounce back win again for the Ravens. Um, and also a vengeance game after what happened last year against Tennessee in the divisional matchup. So we'll see if they can bounce back from that, uh, as well as for Tennessee coming off a bad loss at home to the Colts. And uh, let's see if Derrick Henry uh, will stiff us again this year, pun intended. Uh, but I'm going Ravens 24-21. 24-21 Ravens. I'll get that down on paper. And, Luke, let's go over to you. Your intrigue matchup for this week, week 11. And with the whiteboard, with the uh, second pick in the 2021 NFL draft, the Jags pick. Oh, wait, what's that? They're the mm-hmm. first pick? That's right, because the Jets are going to go to the Chargers, and they're going to win this game. Joe Flacco's out there trying to keep a job. He wants to be in the NFL longer. So what's he going to do? He's going to go win a football game with the New York football Jets. And if they don't, that's probably the last chance that we have of going to the first overall pick. Uh, I do think this is probably the only time the Jets can win a game. Uh, looking forward, the rest of their season is pretty tough, unless Bill Belichick hates them enough to throw a game. So they, they don't get the first pick. Um, but, yeah, all hopes and prayers out on the Jets. So I'm going to say 27-24 Jets. You know, what a, what a chess move that would be by Bill Belichick, saying, hey, we don't want to play against Trevor Lawrence for the next 10 years. Let's go ahead and let them beat us so Jacksonville gets the number one pick. Uh, that, would be, that would be a chess move unlike any other uh, I've seen. So you said 27-24 Jets. Boom. Got it down there. Correct. All right. Well, that's, that's exciting. I mean, I'll be rooting for the Jets this week. What an unintriguing, intriguing matchup for us Jaguar fans. Steven, let's, uh, let's go to you. Do you have a, an intrigue matchup this week? I know we didn't discuss this, but do you have an intrigue matchup you're looking at this week? Yeah, I mean, I mean, looking at the schedule, there's quite a few intriguing matchups that come to mind. But um, for me, um, I could talk about a couple. But I, I won't do that. Um, one for me, for sure, is uh, Stephen. Wait a minute, Stephen. Let me put you on pause for a second. I'm gonna actually flip over to Jacob real quick. And the ones we don't say is the one is, are the ones you're gonna have the choice from. Okay. Sure. Oh, man, he's upset with me now. Go Bolts. Jacob, let's go to you. Intrigue matchup for Week 11. The anticipation is killing me for Steven's intrigue matchup now, to be honest. But, uh, Jake, oh, he might have just left us. Uh, Jacob, let's go to you. Thank you so much for pulling the plug on that because I was so afraid he was going to talk on this topic. Arizona at Seattle. That's my exciting matchup. Damn it. Here's why. Here's why. First off, the Seattle defense is allowing 448 yards of offense per game, 353 passing yards per game. But here's some cool stats about Kyler Murray, who I think is like this year's Lamar Jackson. He's the eighth leading rusher in the NFL with 604. To put that in perspective, James Robinson, who's been our star back this year, 689. He's also the 13th leading passer in the NFL with 2,300 yards. But he's second in the league in rushing touchdowns. This guy's an offensive dynamo. Most of his stats do come on the ground. But now he's going against the worst pass D. I think they're going to win this one. I think they're going to put up 41 points, 41 to 30. Um, four, Russell and the Seahawks have been struggling. And Kyler Murray is going to show out. 
I like it. Anytime we can get stats to back up these claims, it, it makes it better. I like that. I mean, I was looking at that earlier too. I think he has nine rushing touchdowns or maybe 10 rushing touchdowns and Cam Newton has nine. So uh, both those quarterbacks are up there with rushing touchdowns. Very impressive, impressive play there at the end of the game against the Bills as well. Kyler Murray, maybe more impressive by DeAndre Hopkins catching that ball, but impressive nonetheless. All right, let's go over to you, Sam Leggett. Sam, what is your intrigue matchup this week? So I got the Packers at the Colts this week. Packers just played the Jags last week, so they kind of know what to expect here. Kind of a sus defense for the Packers this year. I mean, their run game, can they really stop anyone? Colts have a very balanced attack. Pretty sure that their run de- you know, their run attack is, you know, they spread the ball out a lot with their running backs. But, I mean, they, they have a really balanced attack with Phillip Rivers there. He's doing a great job. Um, I think that the, if the Packers had a hard time stopping the Jags, you know, then they're going to have an even harder time stopping Frank Wright and the Colts. So I, I see Phillip Rivers having a good game. All the, all the Colts running backs doing well as well. And that, that, that game, I suspect, will come down to the wire. I'm projecting a 27-28 win for the Packers in that game, actually. All right, I like it. I mean – you got you to gotta go with the Packers there. They are the better team, and you got to expect that Aaron Rodgers is going to come out similar to the way Tom Brady did this past week, trying to uh, kind of uh, defend his, his own standing and, and perform a little bit higher than a lot of people expect it. I am going to go with the Cowboys at Vikings. Now, this is an interesting one to me simply because the way the Cowboys played versus the Steelers two weeks ago, they took the Steelers down to the wire Uh, Could that have just been a jolt of energy for that team towards, uh, you know, getting Garrett Gilbert in there at quarterback? Did they have a newfound hope uh, to win that game? Or was it just the juice from the the 7-0 Steelers coming into town? Who knows? Uh, But the Vikings are rolling right now. I mean, they're sitting at four and five. They've won three straight games. Uh, Impressive, yes, but to the, the quality of teams they've beaten, not that high. Um, this is another winnable game for them to get them to five and five. And everyone's going to forget about that one and five start. Uh, Dalvin Cook looked pretty bad Monday night as far as his standards go. So are the Cowboys going to load the box and make Kirk Cousins throw the ball? Uh, I think that would benefit the Vikings, to be honest. I think Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen are one of the top three duos at wide receiver in this league. So I think the Vikings are going to get away with this one with a victory. I'm going to go with 30 to 23, but I think it's going to be a little bit more exciting than people think. So with all that being said, Stephen, let's go over to you. You've heard our five intrigue matchups. we got a few minutes left here. What's your intrigue matchup, Stephen? Yeah, uh, it's Monday night. It's Rams, Bucks. Um, you know, last time we saw the Bucks on primetime football Sunday night, they looked terrible at home against the Saints. You know, in a game that I mentioned back at that point as a key defining game for not only that division but for playoff implications as well. This is another playoff implication game with you know the Rams now tied you know with the division lead right now it's a three-way tie but I think they might have the tiebreaker there in the NFC West and the Bucks obviously holding firm at that five spot in the well the first wild card spot so this is a big game and then I want to see how the Bucks respond we, we talked about it we're, we're, you know with some fantasy implications as well I uh, want to see how the Bucks respond they look pretty good against the Panthers, but that's the Panthers. They've been up and down this year. Rams are really playing well, and I want to see what the Bucks have in store, obviously. All righty, all righty. I like it. I'm but excited, I take too. The, I take the Rams. I take I, the Rams to beat the Bucks, And then they also have the Chiefs the next week. So these are two big weeks for the Bucks, personally. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, no, it's, it's a tough division there. We only have a few minutes left. We're going to run through this really quick because we don't want to get cut off here. Jaguar predictions. Jacob, what do you got versus the Steelers? You said you like stats. Here they are. The defense of the Steelers tied for the league lead in takeaways with 17. They've allowed the least first down, so there will be a lot of three and outs on the Jags part. I say they beat us 27-13 on Sunday. All right, Luke, what about you? What do you got? I have the Jacksonville Jaguars losing this game 30 to 14. Sam Leggett, give it to me. I think James Robinson's going to find a lot of eight man boxes this game. I got Pittsburgh winning 34 to 17. All right. And Steven, you're a Steelers fan, so I'll let you pick this one too. What, what score you got for this game? 
I'm going 38-14 Steelers. 38-14. Maynard, give me your Ravens pick and your Jags pick. Oh, you already gave me Ravens. 24-21 Ravens. What do you got, Jags? Yeah, uh, I'm going to go 31-13 Steelers. This might be an ugly one. I like it. Well, I'm going to go opposite. I'm going 27-24 Steelers. I think it's going to be a lot closer than people think. The Jags are playing inspired football right now for some odd reason. Uh, they'll probably still lose. 27-24, we play the Steelers tight. Steelers got away 20-16 to back in 2018. Two fourth quarter touchdowns, won it for the Steelers that year. I think the same is going to happen this year. But until next time, we're running out of time. Everyone, thanks for joining us. Thanks for listening. Go subscribe on Instagram, YouTube, and everything. Thanks, panel, for being here. And go make this world a better place. Take care. How can I be the man when you're the man? How can I be the man when you're the man? How can I be the man when you're the man? Be sure to follow our show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and other podcast streaming services, as well as subscribe to our YouTube channel to check out unique video elements for each interview.